question is, have you heard from WB about continuing since releasing your film? Well, um, tr no. Uh, <laughs> this is what I, here's the thing I haven't, this is the really, if you want to, I haven't heard from them at all. Like from wow. the day after I released the movie, I haven't gotten a phone call or it's been radio silence. Uh, so I don't, the only yeah. communication was the, was Anne's article after the movie oh. was released, but that wasn't directly to me. It was to the people. Um, and that was, oh. yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. Like, as far as I'm concerned, um, you know, let's see what happens with discovery and that's cool. Yeah. And maybe there's like, uh, who knows, but yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cause hashtag restore the Snyderverse. Okay. It's happening. Okay. A lot of people think it's, you know what I'm saying? So, and I, you know, I was going to say something, but never mind. So Rebel Moon focuses on a peaceful colony. So at the edge. And in today's DC video, we are covering the DCEU, DCEU going forward, how the Snyderverse is pretty much being restored based on a very credible source. Also going over a new alleged Flash plot leak that has come to the internet. And I thought I'd go over it and we're going to go over a bunch of other stuff. So yo, what is freaking good YouTube boys to hear? If you are new around here, make sure to subscribe to never miss any of the Marvel DC pop culture based content we do on a daily basis. If you could comment down below everything you think, subscribe to the channel, turn notifications on. And if you want to see what the face behind the beautiful voice looks like, just check us out on Instagram at War Stew. And if you could, follow us on Twitter Sphere, aka Twitter. I've got like 60 followers. It is War Stew G over there. So the two video clips I played before the video started are quite important. So Tyro Magnus, who is a big YouTuber, he's an actor, he's very well connected, had an interview with Zack Snyder post Zack Snyder's Just Seed coming out over a year ago, just before Snyder released his movie on Army of the Dead, sorry. And he said he's not heard anything from Warner Brothers. Obviously, we're talking about Zack Snyder here. Now in the clip I played after that, I'll overlay it right now. He said, basically, the Snyderverse has been restored, but he didn't want to let anything out. So has it secretly been restored? Now I know what you're going to say. Every Twitter super duper scooper is going to say it's not being restored. It's never been touched again. But as I have to keep alliterating to you guys, I was one of the few people who said it's going to come to HBO Max. The Zack Snyder Justice League movie is coming to HBO Max. And I literally literally said it before all the trades, before all the big scoopers. And what I find fascinating and endearing is when it did come out, they were like, yeah, information just changes. Information just changes. So it is interesting that in the first clip, Zach says, oh, I don't know if something happens with Discovery. Something is definitely happening with Discovery behind the scenes. It's not a coincidence that Zack Snyder started teasing images of a reel one week before he started shooting his multi-million dollar two-part big Netflix series. Something is going on behind the scenes. As we know, there's going to be a huge overhaul at WB Discovery, where literally Zaslov is overlooking everything. Yes, Toby Emmerich. Yes, Walt Hamada. You guys love the Hamadaverse. Yes, they're still there, but Toby and Hamada have to answer to Zaslov. So, Snyderverse is still there, and Tyro Magnus basically confirmed it, but didn't say what he was on about. He doesn't really do baity stuff. He's a reaction channel he's an actor he doesn't really tease stuff unless there's something to be teased so that is very fascinating now as for the Ezra Miller the Flash controversy it seems like no one I, I see what the scoop is saying stuff it seems like none of them seem to care that he's literally throwing a chair at a woman and abusing women it seems like none of them it seems like none of these scoopers seem to care about the Ezra Miller situation yet they all care about the Amber Heard situation weird because Johnny Depp accused Ezra Miller physically evidence choked a fan out in ice in 2020 now what is interesting about this situation is you can't exactly rewrite and reshoot a 200 million dollar movie one thing that not a lot of people are realizing is Ezra Miller is playing at least two different variations of the flash so he can't be written out 
of the movie. Now, what they could do is essentially do a post credit scene where he comes back into the new universe, which, if you go by what Zaslav says, it seems like everything they've done could be erased after it all. So we don't really know what avenue they're going down realistically. But Ezra Miller can't be written out of it because then whoever they hired to replace him would have to be like multiple flashes. So that is not going to happen either way. But there's no updates. He hasn't seemed to do anything crazy since then. But there is a petition to get him removed from the movie. And guys, it can't happen because they've spent $200 million. Warner Bros. Discovery are being careful with how they spend money. They could do reshoots. Sure, they're going to do that. They're doing reshoots for Shazam 2. They're doing reshoots for Black Adam because, you know, Black Adam didn't screen test that well. Shazam 2 did screen test well. And Aquaman 2 will have reshoots after Amber Heard allegedly loses his court case, although it's looking very likely that she will lose it. And maybe they will have to think Mira out. She, allegedly, she didn't get a pay increase. We don't know how much of a role Amber Heard even has in that movie. It might be minor. Apparently, Walter Matter tried to remove her. But the higher result at Warner Bros. didn't allow it. But now it's WB Discovery. Is Zaslav going to let this shit slide? I don't think he will. So, now, we got a plot leak for the Flash movie. Now, this is not the one I was sent, but there's some parts that are similar. So, I thought we'd go over it. So, I'm ready to break it down. The movie starts with Barry Allen in line at the restaurant to get a fancy sandwich when Batfleck calls him for help dealing with some terrorists. Barry speeds off just as the terrorists detonate a bomb under a hospital causing it to top. Flash saves everyone including babies falling from the maternity ward. Now we have seen an image of that at DC Fandom event last year. I love it how this plot leak they're calling him Batfleck. Batfleck chases after terrorists in the Bat Cycle but nearly loses them until Wonder Woman shows up and helps him. Now we know Gal Gadot is in this movie. There's another gag where both Barry and Batfleck touch Wonder Woman's lasso and reveal embarrassing secrets. Please get the Josh Whedon cut out of here. We do not need this Josh Whedon level writing, if this is true. I don't know. Barry returns to the restaurant just as his fancy sandwich is done. Barry is dating Iris West. Now, allegedly, Kirsty Clemens isn't really in this movie that much, so is she gonna be dating him? Yes, yeah, sure, but that doesn't really mean she has to be in this movie that much. Who knows? He is the Flash and remembers when he saved her from the car crash. She has a really small role. Barry works at Central City Police Crime Lab alongside Paddy Spivert and Albert Desmond, who are dicks to him. Barry and Batfleck later meet at the Batcave and discuss the murder of Barry's mother, which Batfleck is helping Barry reinvestigate. Barry's mother was stabbed to death by an intruder, whilst his father was at the grocery store picking up a can of tomatoes, and he was blamed for the incarnation of her mother. Barry retrieves security footage that proves his father was at the store. Batfleck enhances it, but his face is still not visible. Really? In the 21st cent? I mean, literally anyone could do this with a basic camera. Really? You got the whole Batcave? That is just ridiculous. Then they talk Barry time traveling back in time to save the Justice League when they fought Steppenwolf. Barry considers traveling back in time to save his mother, but Batfleck advises against it, claiming his mother's death made Barry into the hero he is. And maybe it was always meant to happen. Barry listens at first, but when the security footage is deemed inadmissible in court, he snaps and decides to travel back to the day of his mother's murder. Barry plans to put the can of tomatoes in the mother's shopping cart so his father won't have to return to the store to pick it up later. In the Speed Force, Barry is attacked by another Flash and in the battle with damaged black suit, but appears to be able to escape back to the present. Barry goes to his parents' house and finds out they're alive and well, but then runs into another Barry and realizes he's actually in a parallel universe. Interesting. Barry Wan finds out the Justice League doesn't exist in this universe aside from Batman. He even calls Tom Curry and asks him to speak to Arthur. But Arthur is a dog's name in this universe. Barry too has powers, but is a slacker with no heroic aspirations who lives with counterparts of Paddy and Albert. Suddenly, General Zod, you're not alone, transmission at broadcast worldwide. Barry Wan deduces Superman is out there somewhere. They need to find him to stop Zod before he can return home. They drive to Gotham to ask Batman for help, but instead, Batfleck, they find loony old man Bat Keaton, who is still active well into his 70s. Bat Keaton agrees to help and reproduces Barry's one accident to reconnect the speed force to him, and he gets his powers back. They track the Kryptonian to a secret military base and break in expecting to find Superman, but instead encounter his cousin, Kara Zor-El. Turns out in this reality, Zod killed Kal-El as a child back in Krypton. So Jor-El and his mother, Zor-El, put the codex in Kara and sent her to Earth instead. Kara escapes before the government agents come for her and hide with Batman and Barry's. Kara and Barry to form a special bond. Barry rallies the others to fight the Kryptonians. Bat Keaton gets an armored suit. Kara uses the scout ship to make herself a suit and Barry to improvises a suit from Bat Keaton's old suit. The four confront Zod 
and his men in a big battle. But despite their efforts, Zod blows up Backheaton and snaps Kara's neck. The Flash travels back in time to prevent Backheaton and Kara's death, but they did it in a different way. And the battle continues. The Flash keeps trying to change the outcome of the battle until Barry One realizes that it is a fixed point. Something that was there must happen to make Barry Two a true hero. Barry Two refuses to accept this and goes into the Speed Force to try again when Barry One follows him and is attacked by Black Flash, who turns out to be an older version of Barry Two. Black Flash spent 10 years trying to change the timeline without success before going crazy and deciding the only way to save his world was to kill Barry One. Black Flash chases Barry One across the multiverse, but he is just about to kill him. Barry Two takes the hit and sacrifices himself, causing a paradox that erases the Black Flash. Okay, the Black Flash is like the Grim Reaper of the Speed Force, so this really doesn't make continuity in terms of the Flash comic book universe. This, this is kind of some kind of made up logic. If this alleged plot leak is real, Barry realizes that his mother's death was meant to happen and that he cannot save her, but still goes to the grocery shop and shares a moment with her before she leaves without the can of tomatoes. Barry decides he cannot change the past, but he can change the present and rearranges the shelf. So the can of tomatoes is in a position where the security camera perfectly catches his father's face. Back in the present day, the footage is accepted as proof and his father's innocent and he is released. As they celebrate, Bruce Wayne drops by and Barry is surprised when Batkeaton, instead of Batfleck, a bus drives by with a picture of Wonder Woman and Barry realizes this universes have all merged into one. Supergirl flies from the sky. They still remember the original timeline. Batkeaton says they need to put together a team to protect this new universe and asks Barry if he's echoing a speech Barry gave. He is convinced them to fight Zod. Barry smiles, cut to back. mid credit scene. Barry and Aquaman are hanging out at a bar with a drunken Aquaman, freaking out all over the difference because the old and new DCU chief amongst them. Supergirl used to be Superman. post credit scene. Barry is at an apartment when suddenly the lights go out and the TV and computer screen flicker on and Batfleck's voice is heard saying, find us Barry, you have to find us. Now, I honestly realistically, if I compare this to the other two plot leaks that I've got that both line up, a lot of this is kind of similar, but not really. So I just want to get your thoughts, guys. What do you think about this alleged plot leak? A lot of this does line up with it. A lot of it doesn't. But realistically, if this is the final version of the movie, I don't know if it is. Like I said, I can't go over the other, other two plot leaks I have from the test screener until someone actually like posts it there because I'm not a leaker. I do like to go over plot leaks that are out there. If this was the final version, I'd be happy with it. It's not bad. It's not great. I mean, they've misinterpreted the whole point of Black Flash, if you ask me. But a lot of it is interesting. So also in the news. So I was given some information about what bat is going on with Batgirl. And the kind of vibe I got was that the people working on the set of Batgirl didn't have to worry about the rest of the DCEU, which, I mean, I don't really have much confidence in the Batgirl movie anyway. But the fact that Leslie Grace is saying, yeah, we're on about doing the second movie. It's like, okay, but it doesn't really matter about the greater DCU. And also they haven't delayed Batgirl yet. And it's like, okay, so Batgirl is going to come out before the Flash movie then. Where the freaking hell is Batkeaton? Batkeaton, is that even a thing going to come from? So I do find that very interesting. So like always, guys, let me know. What do you think about Tyrone Magnus's comments? He bases, oh, I can't say that. He's pretty much saying the Snyderverse is restored. What do you think about the Ezra Miller situation? How do you think they should handle it? There realistically isn't a lot they can do. It is one year away. It might all brush over. He needs to get himself into rehab. He needs therapy. He needs some kind of help because he's starting to hurt himself in theory and he's hurting other people and he's being arrested again. It's just a freaking insane situation. And then you put the Amber Heard situation. She might have to be replaced in Ackerman too. It's a freaking crazy time to be a DC fan at the moment. And likewise, guys, let me know what you think about this alleged plot leak for the whole Flash movie. It isn't too bad. It's not too great. But one way or another, it kind of raises the Snyderverse without a raise in the Snyderverse because Batfleck is still there. So like always, guys, check us out on Instagram at WarStew. Check us out on Twitter at WarStewG. And also subscribe, comment, and turn them notifications on. And I will catch you in another video very soon. Catch you later.